Hey guys, today it is about 60 days since we knew about the prices for Modern Masters 2017. And I said previous in a previous video, 60 to 90 days is most likely the low point given that we have a strong history of Modern Masters 2015 and original Modern Masters. So right now, the price point is as low as, as it will probably get. Uh, one of the things that you have to worry about is how easy is it to trade for these cards? How easy is it to accumulate 20 fetch lands? So when it hit day 45, I would have suggested, hey, go ahead and try to trade into them. Today, we are at the point where buying might be the easiest way to do it. Not much of this product is being opened anymore. Not much of the product is drafted given the price point. The price point is a little high for most Magic players and for most people in general to pay $30 for a, a draft with limited price support isn't really attractive when you can do $10 drafts. So the price point is out there in terms of what you get an entertainment value per hour of money spent. So let's talk about the prices. Damnation has gone down a lot. These prices I'm going to show you today, you can actually get them on eBay for much, much cheaper. And even local game stores, I've seen prices lower than this. The thing I want to point out is the Planar Chaos version versus this version. The price difference is much, much higher than other cards we will look at today. So the question is not when should I pick up cards? The answer to that I already answered is yes, today, tomorrow, within the next 30 days, within the next month. But what you should be picking up first. The Zendikar fetch lands have to come first because you need 20 of them. If you already don't have them or if you have some of them and you have to make a complete 20 set, much easier. But if you haven't started, you needed to start like two weeks ago when I told you to start. So Zendikar fetch lands, that would be my starting point. And then casual would be last. So something like Damnation, I would pick up last. If you need Tamagoyce, they are currently sitting at $85, which as you can see is an all time low. I, it's all time low is $84 and, and 58 cents, which was pretty recent. I mean, it was kind of that dip in the middle, but it has been trending down ever since. Still a good card, and if you want to play modern, I, I still believe you need four of them for most modern decks involving green, giving you the flexibility to play. Of course, you can play a budget version of the deck, but sub-85, eBay sub-80 Tamagoyf, that feels pretty good to me given the, the fact that the card was over 200 when original Modern Masters released, where vendors spiked the price they artificial artificially inflated the price at one event so tamagoy is incredibly cheap as you can see the modern masters original is only a hundred and five dollars the future site has a premium being the you know being the most um in high demand but you can still get cheaper copies and that's the beauty of reprints if you wanted the original copy, just pay $135 for it. If you wanted the new copy or the cheapest version of it, you can pay $80, $85. And then everyone's happy, right? The pimp players can get the more expensive copy for whatever reason. And the regular regular players can buy the cheaper copy. It's a win-win. Now, Goblin Guide is an interesting one because you need four Goblin Guides. So the difference between casual which you can buy later on, and stuff that you will play in modern is the fact that you need four of these. It's going to take time, capital, and saving to be able to buy four copies or trade into four copies. It's not going to be that easy to trade into four copies of each of these Zendikar fetch lands, and to a lesser extent, it will be difficult to get four copies of Tamagoyf, it would be difficult to get four copies of Goblin Guide, hence why you can see 
Uh, the thing I want to note is Goblin Guy Modern Masters is around $17, and the Zendikar version, the original version, is around $24. We're looking at a very small price gap. So if you are into original Zendikar cards, this will be a good opportunity for you to go in and buy them. They have plummeted so much since the reprint. Within the next month, I fully expect them to start trending up. There's not going to be any massive spikes because there's so much supply out there. There's not even the need for a second print run. I don't know if there was a second print run. I've heard that there was. Well, what I've heard is they printed so much of it that it was like if it was a second print run. And this product is print via demand. So Death Shadow, if you look at the Death Shadow price, and this is an interesting point to know when the bottom kind of is. When the Death Shadow original version is $9.52 and the Death Shadow reprinted version is $8.25, that is interesting. That is extremely interesting because it shows that the time does not matter. The original card with the same artwork has very little value over the newer copy. When you have a less of a margin, that is one indicator that historically, given modern sets, and we only have really Modern Master 2015 to base our assessment on, but we do have some good cards there, Khan Liberated, uh, we have the Adrazi, Amical in particular. So we do have good cards to look at in terms of, hmm, what are some signs that these prices will, go, this is the bottom. And one of the signs that it is the bottom is when the original copy and the newer version are very similar in price. Because that means people are trading the older, the original copy, which many believe are more valuable as if it really wasn't. And they're just trying to get rid of it. The bigger the price gap, remember Damnation has a $20 price gap. And you might say Planar Chaos, yes. That was not a good time for Magic. There were much fewer of those in uh, in supply. But still interesting to note, these staples will go lower and they will have a smaller margin than casual cards. So right now, maybe hold off on the casual cards. Damnation, when I, I started the video with Damnation because I wanted to show you an example of a card that may still be trending down. But these cards are not going to trend down the Zendikar fetch lands that you need four copies of. Remember, there's four damnations for every four Misty Rainforests. But there's one customer who wants to buy four Misty Rainforests. There's not one customer who really wants to buy four damnations. There's probably four different customers who want to buy one. So instead of looking for one person to do a bigger sale, you're looking for four different individuals who just want it for their EDH deck. Misty Rainforest. As you can see, the Zenicar version is $41. The reprinted version is $33. Now, I'm going to show you another land which is played more in Misty Rainforest because Death Shadow or Death Zoo or some version of that deck is tier one and until it's banned. Now, like, will it be banned? I have a gut feeling that Wizard of the Coast, after printing our Devastation, will try to shake up stuff and ban it. That's just my feeling because they that's what they do. If a deck is tier one for too long, they just ban something from it. What are they gonna ban from it? Well, they're probably gonna ban Death Shadow, and there goes the deck. Just like they banned Maleripod, they banned, you know, Aldrazi Temple. They really banned the namesake of the deck. So Misty Rainforest is interesting. So one of the scenarios that I will tell you is which of these lands should you pick up first? Which of these enemy fetch lands should you pick up first? It's not Misty Rainforest. It's actually the Verdant Catacombs. And I'm going to... Although the Verdant Catacombs is more expensive than Misty Rainforest, it did not begin that way. So let's talk about Cavern of Souls, which is an interesting, interesting component. Why has it gone up? Why has this card, which is $42 now, and very close to the Averton Restored price of $47, why is this graph like this? Why is it so different from the rest of the graphs? Calvin of Souls was printed as a rare in a set with a lot of mythics. It was upgraded to a mythic. And this is a, the pattern, the chart that we normally see. There are not that many Calvin of Souls. 
as there is Damnation, as there is Goblin Guide, as there is Zendikar Fetchlands. There are far fewer of these cards than there are of those cards. And in terms of what people want, it's a mythic, there's less of them, but the demand is not as high as the Zendikar Fetchlands, but still relatively high because you want four of these. If you want one of them for your ED8 deck, that's great, but just like the Zendikar Fetchlands, they come better in fours. You will find buyers who will be willing to pay for four of them, making the sale much easier, making these cards, making this card more, I don't want to say valuable, it's just, it's more liquid, right? If you can find a buyer who wants to buy four, then that's amazing because now you don't have to ship, you don't have to deal with eBay payments and eBay fees and PayPal fees. You don't have to worry about all that stuff. It's just one buyer and you send them a playset. Good card. The I did want to talk about the exception, which is if a card goes from rare to mythic, it does kind of buck the trend that we have been seeing lately. Interesting information. Now, Verdant Catacombs. The most played of them. Why would I say pick up your Verdant Catacombs? Number one, if I know people are really against net decks, but here's my feeling about net decking or playing the tier one deck. Yes, it's kind of lazy. Yes, it's not creative. And yes, ideally you wouldn't do it. But your options are this. And I, this is an argument I can have in the comments. You can either play the tier one deck and win or you can play a sub deck for that time period. Death Shadow is a tier one deck in modern. It is the deck every other deck is chasing. Verdant Catacombs, if there is a fetch land, as you can see, the price point is 46 versus 33 for a Misty, Misty being very, very attractive. But Verdant Catacombs, that's interesting because it's actually being played and they actually need Verdant Catacombs. It's not going to be easily replaced by a Cons of Tarkir fetch land. It's one of the best cards. It's the perfect card for that tier one deck. So let's get into your argument of, you know, I do want to talk about this a little bit, but maybe in a different video. Let's imagine that you buy four smugglers copters and they're the tier one deck. They're the best deck out there. You can win so many FNMs with your smuggler copters over people with the same deck without them. That yes, your entertainment value is increased. You have increased your ROI, I guess, in prize fees or something over a deck that does not run Smuggler's Copter. The same that can be said with Sahili Ra. If Sahili cat combo deck is winning and 40% of the best decks out there are cat combo decks, then your options were to not play the deck that you knew can win and play a worse deck that will lose to that deck I know people say, oh, no, I never lose to that deck. Or wait for an unpredictable ban. Okay, I mean, both scenarios are terrible, but I would rather play the tier one deck and do well at FNM, which I'm spending not my time. My money, the money doesn't matter because whatever, I spend more money on Fire Emblem daily than like an FNM entry. It's the entertainment. Who doesn't want to go F and M and relatively win and know that hey I lo or I lost but not because of my deck my deck was the optimal build. So then we look at the uncommons. It is time to pick up this card. This card used to be like eight or ten dollars. It's still five dollars in Time Spiral. Yes, Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, Odor sets, but overall like man, you, I mean the uncommons from the rares. To the uncommons, now would be the time to pick them up. The mythics kind of are have trending up, minus Tomogorf, uh, because Tomogorf has been reprinted so many times. But the casual cards like Damnation, with $20 might still be too much. I still see it trending down in the next 30 days. But for the Zendikar fetch lines, especially popular ones that people actually need, like Verdant Catacombs, as long as Death Shadow is a tier one deck, I don't see it being that much cheaper. And the trends have kind of shown that 60 days in, or let's say 60 to 70 days in, this is pretty much the lowest point or a very low point, maybe not the lowest, but a low point for many of these top uh, tier one staples. 
and they have to be staples because you need four of them. That's how you determine if it's staple. Damnation, like unless somebody's playing a random deck, you don't need four of those. You just need one for your EDH. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below uh, with a question or uh, you know something about. I will make a longer video about net decks. I feel like people give it too much. I mean, not maybe not net decks, but playing cards that were banned. You have two options: play the tier one card that's going to win you the game. And I know people say, "Oh, well, I can do artifact hate. I can do something, something that's like really random, and it's only good against this one smuggler copter deck that you're playing." But yeah, your options are either play the best deck with the best cards, or wait for a unpredictable amount of time to play a card to hope for a ban. Those are your two options, right? By definition, a ban means that deck was very, very good. Anyway, that's it, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.